Hi campers, this is Darren with My RV Works. Today we are in Union, Washington. Oh my gosh, is that the sun? Ah, oh, it's too bright. So we're coming out of the, the winter, we're coming into spring. It's actually getting warm, it's exciting. We got Hood Canal back behind us and the Olympic Mountains, they're so beautiful with their snow on them. Uh, we were up there with some friends just the other day playing in the snow. So today what we have for you is we have this road trek and we're gonna be doing several things on this road trek. So uh, what this is going to be is a preventative maintenance type of a service call. Uh, there's really nothing wrong with this, but we're going to be checking different systems on that so that they can go have an entire summer long of travel and fun and knowing that everything's gonna be working great for them. So, so follow along. Um, the idea I think is to break this up into several small videos and um, so you can pick and choose which one you need to watch. So here we go, let's go have some fun making sure that they have a happy camping experience. Okay, let's talk about these refrigerators. Now the customer states that it's getting too cold, okay? And if you've got, this is a Dometic, now we're in a class B RV, so these, this, this particular one is a smaller one, but it's gonna work the same on your larger refrigerators on your Dometics, okay? How do you adjust the temperature? Now, right here on my face, in the eyebrow board, I see this thing colder, warmer, one, two, three, four, five. That's only part of the equation. If we open up the door and show you inside, you're gonna see this thermistor. So let me show you all the parts and I'm gonna explain how they work and then you'll know how to adjust your refrigerator. Part two of our equation is this little slider right there. It's a resistor, it changes resistance based on temperature. So as the temperature changes, the resistance value is going to change. And that is an analog value that's gonna go into our control board. Um, sometimes they're on the right-hand fin and sometimes on the left-hand fin. Now I've gone ahead and made a sticker and wrote colder and warmer because this customer did not have his sticker. Now that slides up and down on that fin. If you go up on the fin, your refrigerator is going to run a little bit colder. If you slide down on the fin, it's going to run a little bit warmer. Now, let me pull you out of this refrigerator here and explain how that thermistor works with my one, two, three, four, five buttons, okay? So there's a relationship between these two inputs, if you will. So the control board is in the back and the control board is going to take its marching orders on what to do based off of these two inputs, the one, two, three, four, five input and the thermistor. The refrigerator is really a heating appliance. It works on the principle of absorbing the heat from the inside and, and uh, exhausting it to the outside. If it can't scrub off its heat, it can't cool. The thermistor inside, the thing that slides up and down, is telling the control board, which is controlling the boiler, what the ohms value is, which we translate into temperature. Now, in my phone and on my sheet, I have the ohms value, but I want to keep this really simple. It's it's the, the ohms value that I'm about to speak is not the real value, but I'm going to use this as an analogy to help you get your head wrapped around this thing. The target of this refrigerator is 37 to 40 degrees. So for purposes of instruction only, do not take your meter and use these numbers, but let's say in an imaginary world, purposes of instruction, that at 40 degrees inside this food compartment, my resistor is going to read 40 ohms. It's not, it's an, it's an analogy, but it's gonna read 40 ohms. If it's 50, 50 ohms, 60, 60 ohms. You see where I'm going with this, right? To create this analogy in our mind. So when the resistor gives it 40 ohms to the control board, the control board saying, hey, I'm happy. There's no reason for me to do anything except sit back and just enjoy that beer getting ice and cold. But as that resistor starts to change value because it's getting warmer in here, he's saying, well, hey, I'm 50 ohms, 50 degrees, 60 ohms, 60 degrees. That control board is interpreting these resistance values to say, I'm out of my range, okay? So therefore I need to turn on my boiler. Turning on my boiler creates heat, begin the cycle, okay? How long should I turn my boiler on for? That's the question. That's where this comes in, right there, okay? Oh, and it's not one minute, two minute, three minute, four minute, five minute. Think of it as a toaster where you have that little gauge on the front of that toaster that has like a one, two, three, four, five. I like toast, not warm bread. If you're gonna make me a sandwich, I want it to have that golden crust on it. My wife, love her to death, she likes warm bread. So we always have to make sure we get a toaster that has that adjustment on it. She's a one, I'm a five. That's what this is. That doesn't mean I don't know, but on that toaster, that doesn't really interpret to me one minute, two minute, three minute, four minute, five minutes. It's just an interval. Five intervals longer than one, okay? So all that is is an interval. I'm sure that there's some range or some gauge, but I'm just trying to get your head wrapped around this so you understand what these things are. Thermistor saying, I'm too hot. Control board says, turn on boiler. How long should I turn a boiler on? Well, let's look at this. 
I should turn on for one interval, two interval, three interval, four interval, five interval. Okay. And then when he gets, let's say I put it, I don't know, three intervals. Three. So that says turn on, boiler turns on. How long should I stay on that interval of time? Stay on that interval of time. And then when he's done with that interval of time, he'll say, report, Hoorah, sir, yes. And he's going to now at that point, he's been ignoring that thermistor until that's ding, time's up. He's going to go look at that thermistor and he's like, how do we do? How do we do? Do we do good? Do we do bad? Oh, we're at where we need to be? Fantastic. So it's like a PID algorithm thing in an analog world. Isn't that exciting? So thermistor tells a control board what the temperature is inside based on a resistance value. And this guy right here tells that boiler how long to stay on. Does that make sense? Great. Hope that helps. So in this instance, customer says his refrigerator is too cold. Well, he's been playing with this value. He didn't know about the thing on the inside. That's what this video is all about. The video is to tell you about the slider. Up colder, down warmer. I would imagine his was probably all the way up. Now, if you really want to get into some fun stuff, take that thermistor and just kind of hang it loose. Okay, that's putting your refrigerator effectively in bypass mode. He's not reading that fin temperature at all, and he's going to go in Arctic mode. So if you're really trying to troubleshoot your refrigerator, just pull that little cup off, that little plastic thing, pull that off, and let that thermistor just kind of dangle down just in the air. And it's not reading the fin temperature, it's reading the air temperature. And um, then your refrigerator will just go into Arctic mode as long as everything's working. If it won't go into Arctic mode, we have some problems. It could be a uh, heating element that's bad. It could be low gas pressure. Um, it could be a uh, seal leak here. On your Norcold, you're going to get an, an NOCO code. NOCO. I've got a whole video on what that NOCO means. Go look for the video on there. So um, anyway, hope that helps. Need two, two, you need two things. <laughs> you need two things. Uh, this tells the boiler how long to stay on. The thermistor tells the control board it's too warm. So hope that helps on keeping your food cold uh, or you want your targets between 37 and 40. Okay, folks, so there you have it. I hope that uh, going through some of these, um, you know, annual maintenance type things on this RV uh, have helped you. Um, and if, if it has helped you, hey, give us a thumb up. It does help. And uh, subscribe to it. Share it with some friends. And uh, happy camper, say my RV works. And I think that now this, this RV and this camper are going to have a good summer in their, in their, in their coach. Uh, we've checked some of their systems. Everything's working great. So I, I expect good results from them. And I expect to hear good results from you as well. So hopefully I, my rambling and everything doesn't frustrate you too much. And um, just got too much in here I want to share with you. So, but that's why we break these videos up to kind of uh, search them by topic and whatnot. So, um, yeah. Hey, help us out. Give us a thumb up. We appreciate you. And uh, happy camper, say my RV works. So this is Darren signing off. Bye-bye. <laughs>